All right, time once again for Catching Up with Tommy Mac podcast here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com on their Facebook page, Facebook Live. Hello, Facebook. And, of course, we're streaming on the relevant app, the group messaging app, with live interactive podcasts and all throughout. Go check out all the awesome content. You Jag fans, go to Jaguar Fanatics channel. Check out all the great shows that are going and the interactive chat throughout the week. Uh, A lot of fun. There's polls, there's chat topics, there's all types of stuff, pictures, videos, you name it, all right there on the relevant app. R-E-L-E-V-N-T is the way you spell it. And uh, great to, of course, be on that platform. All right, the the Jags taking on the Browns this Friday night in their second preseason game. Of course, the Browns the first one. Look, the Browns on paper should be a good team. We don't know what's going to happen to QB yet. I think Joby, Jacoby Percet can hold the fourth down, you know, depending on Deshaun Watson. I think he's fine. He, he's not going to, you know, carry the offense by any means, but he's a very solid, manageable type quarterback that hopefully doesn't lose games for you. But on paper, the Browns are pretty darn good. Good on defense, good on offense, got some weapons. Uh, their running back's not happy, but Browns say too bad. So you just stay there and play out your contract. Which I like. I like the fact that a team's saying, hey, okay, you're not happy. Sorry. You're still under contract. We still need you. You're still part of the team. We'll try to work it out. But, you know, maybe we can, maybe we can't. Um, but enough of this, you know, demanding anything. And he hasn't yet. Kareem Hunt has not. But I, uh, word is that he does want out of, uh, of Cleveland. All right, Graham Marsh is back off a trip to Canton, Ohio. Of course, for Tony Baselli's Hall of Fame induction. Look, I'll just, I didn't go, um, but man, really happy for Tony and his family. And the speech was dead on. God family football, man. That's that's right up my alley, man. That's, that's how I feel, too. Same. Throw the friends in there, you know, behind families, maybe somewhere in football. And I, <laughs> depends on the friend. <laughs> some go in front, some go behind. It depends. But nonetheless, uh, I thought it was a great speech. He nailed it all. He covered it all. He really did, and uh, I thought it was a fantastic, fantastic speech, and really cool that he that he that he that he made it. It's about time he should have made it, and now we'll see who else makes it. Uh, I will say this, and it's funny. So I had a little connect. I had a connection to Dick Vermeil. Uh, I used to interview him. Great guy. I mean, great guy. He actually called in '91. He was a a uh, broadcaster. And he was with Brent Musburger, and they called the Boston College Michigan game. And I still have that tape. I can still hear him. I had a pretty good game that game. So it was just great hearing him. But then I got to interview him at Radio Row. Uh, what a great man. Great, great, great individual. I'll say this. I saw the, you know, his stats, his resume. They're great. Tom Coughlin's are better. They just are. I mean, I, I don't know how you can do- deny that guy entry into the Hall of Fame. I mean, you're talking one Super Bowl, which is great for Dick Vermeil. One, one, lost one, right? Coffin's won two, right? If he didn't lose any, did he? No, he's won two. Nope, he's he's two and zero. Oh. He's been to the AFC Championship <clears throat> game multiple times, playoff games multiple times, division titles. He's got to get in. Both Super Bowls against the best coach and the best quarterback of all time, and one of them against an yeah. undefeated Patriots. Right, right. Great point. I mean, and a brilliant move at the end of the year to keep his team and to battle it out and 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 fight to the end there. And that gave, I swear, that gave them momentum into the playoffs. Have you heard the John that. Madden story in regards to that? Yes, After I have. The game, yeah, that's yeah. so cool. No doubt, no. John doubt. Madden calls Tom Coughlin yep. in tears. Yeah, talking about that's the best thing that's happened to this game in thirty yep. years. Yep. When and it was a brilliant games. move because what did it do? It gave them confidence to beat the Patriots. That's exactly what it did. And I, I just look, I I think he's in. I also he should be in. I also uh Sammy Mills was with the Saints when I tried out with them as a rookie. And he, he as a linebacker, he was the same inside linebacker position. Him and Vaughn Johnson, two of the best in the league. Sam Mills was five nine, two hundred and thirty pounds. I tell you, Graham, he would truck big off like three hundred and thirty pound offensive line. He would buckle them to their knees. Because he would come, he had, to, he had a big, solid head, man. He'd come up, and they come on and you know, block him 
when you used to two gap, whap, those guys would fall to the damn knees. I swear to you. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, what a beast. <laughs> and he was, but he was the sweetest guy, the nicest guy, always willing to help, which really later on in my career, and I was nothing like Sam Mills. Yeah, you help the young guy. Yes. But you're confident in your ability. You're not worried about some kid taking your job, especially some rookie free agent. You help him out. What do you need, Tommy? You need something? You know, he, he would tell me, he's like, any question, you got any question, you come to me and Vaughn, we'll, we'll help you out. Not a big deal. That's cool. Yeah, he was he was absolutely uh, fantastic. So And, and of course, uh, Leroy Butler's story is phenomenal. I got to meet him at Guns N' Hoses not too long ago. What a humble guy, man. Cool dude. And his story is incredible, and his speech was great. So I thought overall a great Hall of Fame weekend. Of course, the Jags stunk it up, you know. I, I'm not putting too much stock into it, you know, but I, I will say, and I, I think I speak for a lot of fans, it's like you're expecting so much more. Even the backups, like just, you're not expecting it to be 20 nothing at halftime. I mean, you're not. You're not expecting, you're expecting, because then what do you, I, I went to bed after halftime, blatantly honest, like I always did. And I was like, looks about the same to me. I mean, that's what it felt like. Now, I know it's not the same because I want to see the starters, and I know it's going to be different. But it felt like the same old, and I'm not talking just Durbin. I'm talking Doug in his last year, too. It felt like the same. Again, here we go. We can't stop the run. They can run right through us, you know. Well, they were only in pants for two days. Okay. It still seems <laughs> I don't like give that excuse at still, all. That's a bunch of baloney. Still seems like they've never seen a screen pass before. Screen pass. I mean, just like daggers after dagger well, it's after like, dagger. It's a, to your point, like who wins and loses a preseason game doesn't matter. It does. But how you perform and, matters. Right. Yeah. And, and, I, and how you perform just, definitely matters. Just like you said, and I, I agree, I understand that the starters didn't all play. Right. But – Neither did theirs. Well, I mean, some neither of them did, did theirs. But... They had a couple of guys that are going to contribute that played just like the Jaguars did. Yep. And the Jaguars did not look like they belonged in the same field. No. That no. Why? You're right. Why do they look like they don't belong in the same? Why do they look like they I, play in two different well, leagues? I'll tell you one thing that could be the reason. The Raiders started a full week ahead of the Jags. I know. They reported the 18th. Yep. The Jags decided not to report to the 25th. Did that extra week help? I would I would say yes. It probably right. did. Better football condition, used to the instincts, you know, the creature of habit for a full week ahead of you. So maybe that did. Does it matter? No. Does so, it really matter? No. I'll tell you what does matter, though. Progress through these next three weeks. Agreed. Seeing that your team is ready to go week one. And maybe you don't care, and, and I'm sure the coaches aren't worried about what the fans think. But I know from just from a a you know an analytical standpoint, I won't even use that word because I'm not that analytical. But just from you know being able to 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 give them some kind of grit, like I got to see it. Like show me. I don't care about pra- Cam Robinson's dominating in practice. That's freaking awesome. I want to see him dominate in a game, so even if it's for a little bit. I don't care. But you got to, I don't know, I would play these. I would have played the starters a little bit last week just to just to get them out there. Even if if Trevor only played a series. You know, it's funny. We went from a year ago, the kid needs all the reps he can get to, you don't, you don't need him. You know what I mean? I think he needs him. Still a young QB. He's a very young QB. I'll tell you, I was on, uh, I was on the relevant app. Thank you for everybody for checking it out. Uh, yesterday, talking about Justin Herbert. You know, he's never played in a preseason game. Really? No, because COVID, and then he did such a great job on the field. Like yeah. They're like, well, we're not going to play him next. And wow. now this year, they're not playing him at all. He does not play in the preseason That's game. That's super interesting. Yeah, and look at the year he he's has. He's proven he doesn't need to. But he's proven right. it. Thank I, you. Agreed. Trevor hasn't proven Trevor's it yet. Trevor's not. I, I agree with that. I want to, And I think he can. I'm not down on the kid. And he does look good in practice. There are other throws he doesn't look good at all. And you're like, whoa. Like at least when I was out there, he made some dynamite throws. And they made some throws like, man, those you should that's pitch and catch. That should be routine. Again, I you can't, that's his next step. You can't get too up or down about practice. You got to see it in the game, and hopefully we do. I hope again, you, you you do have to balance the risk of injury, but you can get injured in practice. I've seen it. You can get injured in a scrimmage. 
You can get injured in team. 11 on 11, thud. Out for the year injured. It happens. New York Jets, Mekhi Becton, knee injury yesterday. It looks like it's very serious. What a shame. Young tackle, massive, got a great future. He'll be back. Big blow to the Jets. Not that we care, but those things happen. What do you not? You got to practice. You got to. You, you got to go full speed. You got to do thud. You got to do these things. Right. Guys get hurt. So in- injuries suck. Trust me, I had two major ones, and they absolutely suck. Every time I see an injured guy like that, I feel bad for him because it could. It could. You just never know. Do you come back to be the same player, or is your career done? You don't know. He doesn't know yet. I'm gonna. I'm gonna weigh the the odds that it's not done, but you just never know after you get injured. So. Let's pretend that in that water bottle of yours, <laughs> there's a couple of sips in the fountain of youth in there. Yeah. And you take a sip and you're 27 years old and you're on this Jaguar team. And you went up to Canton and you put the pads on and you played in that game. Yeah. Are you worried? As a player? Yeah. I, I know you wouldn't say it, but like in, no, in the back of No, but I would have played better than Muma. Well, right. I mean, right, right, I would have right. I would have hit Jacobs in the face at the okay. line of scrimmage the, a couple let's, of times. Let's say this then. Just, let's say you were oh, a starter. <laughs> Let's yeah. say you were sorry, so you didn't play right. in the game, but you would like suited up as on the sideline. As a player, line. I'm not worried, okay. because, especially if my starting unit's not out there. It okay. doesn't really matter. Got it. But it matters in the whole, like, you just, I don't know. I expected different, right? I did. I expected different. They, they had, it felt like they had more intensity in that practice I went to than the game, at least from, oh, yeah. granted, I wasn't there. Just That was on Sunday, right? That was on Monday. Last one. I didn't go oh, this okay. past yeah, time. Yeah, I'm yeah. a week ago gotcha, before gotcha. the game. Yep, and yep, they yep. look good. They look good. It, again, it's it. you can't get carried away. I'll tell you what I do want to see. I want to see our front seven. Starting front seven play a, a, a little bit. I don't care if it's a few series. You know, just all who your starters are right now. I want to see it. And you better look. You're, you're 3-4-D. If you don't have a nose tackle that doesn't get pushed around, it, it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And if Devon Hamilton's my starting nose tackle, I see him get – now, granted, it's two-on-one. It's not a fair fight. But that's what nose tackles have to deal with every single snap, when it, especially in a run play. And he, I think he gets too high. I think he's too big for that position. He doesn't get low enough. And trust me, it doesn't matter how big you are. Two guys will take you. They got leverage. You're going roller skating, baby. So Vita Vea might You're be the best in the league. What's that? So Vita Vea might be the best in the league. Well, he's got leverage now. That's why a little shorter's better. Like you want 6'1", 320. He just That's plops really down good there at just, you know, he, three yep. yards each way. That's all you need him for. He, Vita Vea anchors down. Oh, you're not moving him. A center and a guard get on him and they go nowhere. Him. That's right. You're not moving them. So and all these other freak athletes on Tampa's defense get to make all these plays to make the because plays he's because sitting there him. plugging up that hole. I'm telling you, especially the inside guys, you cannot stop the run. Remember I said this, you cannot stop the run without a stout nose tackle in your three. if you're going to run a 3-4 defense. You can't do it. So, you know, look, we I want to see that. You know, it, I saw where Foley, uh, Fadusaki's out there, F- Fotosaki. Fatu. Foley, Foley Fatu Kasi. Fatu Kasi. I'm going to get it right, Foley. I'm sorry. I know you're much bigger than man. I, I apologize. If I see he was back out of practice, I'm going to see him in there. Uh, I want to see more out of – I still – I think Devon Hamilton can be a star. I've said it for, since he got drafted. You I have think been. He can play but not nose. Get him one-on-one with that guard. Now, granted, do guards and tackles double team from time to time? Yeah, they do, but not as much as a guard and center do. So – I think you got to get him on that three technique edge. That's but, just my opinion. But is there an opportunity to do that in a three-four defense? Well, you might have to tinker with that three-four defense. Yeah. And look, it's not, it's three-four. It's going to be four-two-four. You know, in a four-three-four, it's going to be five. Whatever, two five. He's going to mix it up. I mean, you're, you've already seen some of that. So. Does Does Devon Hamilton have enough mobility yes. to be a Dewan Smoot big end? No. Okay. Well. You mean a stand up outside back? No, 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 not standing up. Um, not a two I point might stance. try him out there. Yeah, I'm, put, Listen, I'm, I'm trying Malcolm Brown out there. I'm trying Devon Hamilton out there. Yeah, for sure. I'm saying in, in a three four defense. Yeah, in the when base. you've got those stand up outside, your two stand up outsides are yeah. Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. Your two on the line big ends. Yep. Yeah. 
Can Devon Hamilton be one of those? I think guys? he can. Okay, I think he's athletic enough to do that because he could overpower a deta- uh, an offensive tackle in that position. He, right? He's a big man who can move. So look, he had six sacks as a senior at Ohio State from his interior defensive tackle position. Uh, granted, that's college. It doesn't totally mean a lot, but it shows that he's got some mobility to move. But let me throw this at you: Josh Allen's on a tear. He is. He's he's. He looks like he's ready to rock and roll for a big year. Now, granted, Cam Robinson's been doing pretty good against Josh Allen in one-on-one drills. So hopefully that's, you know, they're both getting better, right? But if Josh Allen ends up being the guy that we that they draft him to be like he was that first year, it's going to be a big year. We know Trevon Walker. Now, look, Trevon looked great. It's like he carried away. He looked great. Let's see him. Go. I want to see against starting big-time left tackles. If he does it against them... Then I'm like, okay, I still think he's a good pick. I'm not. I I, th- I like the upside. He looks good, but oh, look at him! He got his first sack. Well, he went up the field. The quarterback came up. He slid. I mean, it wasn't like a, you know, got around and you know, just an incredible sack. It was a sack. He gave him a sack, but he, you know, he kind of rolled into it. So I'm not giving him that much. I'm not that impressed just yet. I am impressed, so because that first move, the one he got the penalty on, that was his best play, in my opinion. I mean, and granted, that tackle was probably like, holy beep, this kid's strong. He absolutely I didn't know he bullied. was coming this big. Like, he, he absolutely he, bullied that offense. He got tackle. after him, so that was a good one. But I want to see more out of him. But I'm very impressed by him so far. I just, I'm not getting that carried away. But, but, but let's keep it going. Arden Key, a great signing, in my opinion. I can't wait to see what he can do. He gets on that guard. He is so long, and his arms, he's got an unbelievable swim move. Watch number 49. That guy, man, he is going to be uh, uh, dynamite, in my opinion. Throw in Smoot, who's solid as ever, still looking good. Most and underrated he, player on the team. I agree. He's kind of that Dwan lunch Smoot. pail. He'll get you. He'll, he makes plays that never kid, and he gets after. Has him. never gotten the credit he has deserved since he's been on this team. Gotsis, too. I'll throw Gotsis in there, but he's he's not in this group I'm, I'm putting together. Chason looks better than ever. More athletic than I've seen. By the way... He put a spin move. Now, granted, Jawan Taylor coming off the injury, but he put a spin move on him that looks so natural, which show and that was yesterday, I think. I see all these videos on Twitter, which is great. Um, it looks so natural. He looks comfortable. He looks comfortable. I know he does this jump thing and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's going to work in a game, but when he set up Jawan Taylor on that spin move, it looked like it looked fluid. It looked flawless. It was a really nice move. And to me, that shows that he's getting comfortable. He's not thinking about it. He's just doing it. The guy's too big and athletic to give up on. I don't know if that's his position. You know what I mean? I personally don't think it is. But you know what? If he can get comfortable at rushing a passer, he's going to be a nice situational guy. Because think about this. On passing downs, Arden Key, maybe throw Trevon Walker down. Still got Allen. Throw in Chase on or Smoot. You know what I mean? You just upgraded your pass rush and defensive line. Gives you options, which is a great, uh, great thing. Uh, but I got to see more on the interior you and, think, and so, see what where they're at because they got to stop the run. You don't stop the run. I don't care how many sacks you get. So Sorry to cut you off. You, you think Chase on is an inside backer, right? I do. And you've thought that for a while. I would, I would compare him to this. We used to call... There was a uh, defensive um, uh, package called Bat, B-A-T. Okay. And the Bat was a guy that would roam behind the D-line, and he'd run games with the D-line. So say there was a guy on the nose. Okay. He would kind of walk around, and then on the snap, he would come at the other side of the center and hit him. And then that guy would come around him. So kind of the games like that, like exit stunts, twists with the other D lineman. Joel Schmingy was our bat, and he was really good at it. I think Chason could be in a similar type role. I think you could move him around and 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 bring in the other guys as well. Keys, you know, Arden Key and 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 Josh Allen still having those guys out there in Trevon, but having him somewhere roaming around. Cause I think look, I just go back to watching him at LSU, which I only watched a few games, but he was never an outside pass rusher. He played over the guard. He was moving around the whole time. So, I don't know. That's what I do with him. I will tell you this. With that athleticism and speed, you can definitely utilize those talents without a doubt. All right, I'm going to rip through a few more. Um, 
Cisco, star in the making. Is he a Sean Taylor type? He's bringing the wood. Whew. He's bringing it's the wood, praise. and he's fast, and, man, he's a ball hawk. God bless Sean Taylor, and rest in peace, but, and a phenomenal player. And I don't want to put that on Andre, but could he be that type of impact player? I, I tell you, everything I'm seeing and reading, and, and I, I told you, I stood next to him at practice. I was like five. I was like, holy cow, this kid's a big kid. He ain't no safety. Solid, too. Like an outside backer almost, man. He he looks he looks really, really good. I got to see more out of Muma. I wasn't that impressed with Chad Muma on, on Sunday so or on Thursday. He'll, he'll get a chance to redeem himself. Uh, look, first game going from Wyoming to the National Football League. It's a different level of play. It just is. You can adapt to it, and I believe he will. So we'll see how he uh, makes it out on Friday. Kicking job. I was going to make a joke. It's like Mutt versus Jeff. You know what I mean? Because Santoso's like 6'5", too. What a kicker. Yeah, if he doesn't a make it as a kicker. If he doesn't make it. In, Play a tight end or something. If, yeah, if he didn't win the kicking job, he can be, he can be uh, Trayvon Walker's this backup. This would be fun. Elliot Fry, six feet, one cent. I still, again, you got to move on, but I don't know why Matthew Wright's not our kicker. Let Logan Cook kick off. Who cares? He's a phenomenal punter. Guy's got a big leg. I don't care if the kid can't kick it into the end zone. What I care about is 21 to 24 and four from 50. That's what I care about. That's a big enough leg for me. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how the kickers uh, work out for the Jags. But, uh, again, uh, big big week this week. I hope we find out uh, who's going to play sooner than later because I, I hope the starters get a good run. They need a good run, in my opinion. All right, quick look around the NFL. I mentioned Mackay Becton. What should what damn shame? A very, very uh, damn shame. QBs on the men: Matthew Stafford, Joe Burrow, and Jameis Winston. Jameis his uh, foot injury not serious, but coming back from the ACL. Burrow had an appendicitis, but he's been out. And Stafford with his elbow. They can't figure that out. Just interesting how maybe they should try the Aaron's. Rogers route and take some of that. What do they call it? Ayahusaka? What is that? It, and, and by the way, it's not part of the drug. It's not a drug violation, says the NFL. You're talking about that crazy fast he did? No, it's a, it's some kind of hallucinogenic drug you take. Oh. And it's supposed, it's like sh- mushrooms, I guess, or peyote or something like that. You ever shroom? No. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Even I if wouldn't I did, do I it. Ta- My Even advice I- to you do not. Even if I did, I would have told you no yeah. just right now. Yeah, but, uh, I know. I Your don't. mom and dad are probably listening. <laughs> of course he didn't. No way. Um, but but that's what he got into, and he said that he had this out-of-body experience or something. <laughs> Whatever. But he's it's not on the drug violation list, so he's, he's good. Um, how about this? And I'll wrap it up. NFL to refs. Focus on illegal contact. And roughing the passer. Not enough flags were thrown last year, they said, on the legal. How many more rules are they going to make so the offense can score, score points? I mean, seriously. We used to be able to mug the wide receiver going off the line of scrimmage as long as the ball was not out of the quarterback's hand. Five-yard rule now, okay. Still mug him. You know, I want a mean, nasty, pressing corner that's going to mug that, that wide receiver to death. He doesn't even want to come off the ball, you know what I mean? But how about that? The NFL, geez, what a shock. You want more points, do you? Those QBs can't get hurt. You, you, you guarantee them way too much money. You can't. They can't get hurt. Are you kidding me? What I what I predict will happen with Don't that. Don't try touching Deshaun Watson when he's eligible to play. They're oh, going to throw red flag. They're going right. to throw flag after flag after flag. Right. The the way I – what I feel like will happen with that is kind of how it's been happening the last couple of years, which is – because it happened with Trayvon Walker, that first play. Throughout the preseason, yeah, they're gonna call everything. Yeah, well, you, he did hit the head. You can't hit that. Yeah, head. so you can't hit, and they, he like, didn't mean to. He just, you know, it was inadvertent. Yeah, I think they're gonna call everything during the yeah. preseason, and then during the regular season, they'll back off a little bit, and it'll kind of be a forgotten about thing. Yeah. But then in a couple of it's gonna come big back. close games. Yeah, there yeah. might be a couple of yeah. game, a couple of flags are super controversial and then it'll be at the forefront of conversation you know i again i think we talked about this last season you and i here in this studio yep. that there's got to be like an inadvertent hit to the head and a flagrant hit to the head yes with hands i mean because sometimes you, you're not trying to you're trying to get your Correct. hand up to block the ball 
and it does come down and it it hits him in the face. I don't. I mean, it's, well, it's not like, like in, you're whacking him in the face or grabbing his face mac and, and pulling him down. It's like how college football has targeting. Doing the Miles Garrett. Right. It's like how college football has targeting. Yeah. And in my opinion, it needs a targeting one and a targeting two because yeah, I agree with that. There's such thing as like not an, all the same. It's and it's the same as the personal fouls in the NFL. Sometimes it's inadvertent and right. clearly not dirty. Yeah. It just is a natural play. And guys get ejected for it because it fits the textbook definition. Right. And it's like, well, Man. that's clearly not the spirit of the rule. Yeah. So there needs to be one like, okay, you know, may maybe a 15 yard, we keep it moving. Yeah. And then there's other plays where it's like, clearly that's a dirty play. If the guy has the ball, I don't think anything's dirty unless you're head hunting. Right. I'm sorry. That's a game of foot. I know that's not the rule. He didn't see you hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? What? That's name of football. What are you talking about? You know, bring back unnecessary roughness and leave it at that. You can decide what's unnecessary. It's rough. It's a rough sport. It's got to be rough. Bring that back. What's nece What's necessary roughness to win a game? What's unnecessary? It I think the be league. That difficult. I think the league doesn't like to do that because they that they means... want to protect their money, guys. Graham, they right. want the offensive guy. Your star quarterback can't be out. He's right. he's the money maker. But also, look at their face. They're leaving. They don't want to make it a subjective thing. It has to be like a textbook right, thing. Right, but right. But the problem with it that is subjective. Correct. Every, isn't PI subjective? Isn't yes. holding subjective? Right. Unless it's blatant. Right. You know what I mean. The like, problem is everything's subjective. All of especially someone like you because you played. But I mean, most fans that somewhat know what they're talking about. When you see a dirty play, you know it. Right. When you see it. Right. Right. It, pass interference. You know it when right. you see it. You think a about a catch. Right. A couple years ago, it was, it was what is a catch? What's right? You know a catch when you see a when catch. When you see a catch. Right. right. But yeah. it's hard to like put that in words. Yeah. That's the issue. Well, I now look. You remember, and I know we're going long here, but you remember um, when James Harrison lit up that Browns receiver. This is when all that. It's amazing that say, man is still alive. Kind of started, <laughs> you know, like, and that right. was a defenseless player. I get it. The ball wasn't there, and he's sitting on the outside zone, and the guy's looking back at the QB, and he lights him up. I, I get it. Or maybe the ball just got there. That I can see. But, you know, back in the day, receiver comes across like a low shallow, like inside that five-yard mark. And the ball's not in the air. You could give him a nice jack. Now, sometimes you could hit him good. Sometimes you're just pushing him off his mark, which does what? It doesn't allow him to roam free the route. in the middle of it alters the route. That should be allowed to me. Like, I, I agree. Receiver coming, whack, and getting drilled in the face and maybe breaking his neck and all. Yeah, I would I would totally be I'm I'm fine with that. That's a defenseless type situation that's unnecessary roughness what's necessary knocking that guy off his mark so he can't just roam free how many times we saw it against the jags wide open over the middle Sh shallow cross five seven three yards whatever it is that shallow crossing pattern wide open look at me don't i look pretty just toss it to me you don't even have to throw it overhand you can even <laughs> throw a pitch it you know what i mean that, that's that, why I that to me is I don't know. I and again, I think the NFL. That's what this whole illegal con. Whatever. That's why you've seen Mug it. Em. That's why Best you've seen it with Tampa's the poster child with their defense. But you can tell the Jaguars are trying to add personnel to be like that, especially with Mike Caldwell here now. Yeah. Defense is now. You just got to draft elite speed, man. Yeah. Well, you need speed and, everywhere. And ball players. Ball player. Like you take. I'll give you an example. Chase on. Ball player or athlete. 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 Yeah. Uh, Cisco. Yeah, you're right. Cisco. Ball player or athlete? Both. Both. Yeah. Right. There's a difference. Yeah. Now, maybe Chase on turns in to be a great player for the Jaguars, right? Maybe. But that's the difference. You got I, I want elite speed too, but they got to be able to play. No, you're right. You you're know right. what I mean? They got to be able to play the play their position, whatever that position is, to the best of their ability. Like they got to, they got to. Get it done. He's in today's NFL. Ray Lewis would play at 
20 pounds lighter than he did. Yeah, to move around yeah. faster. Damn right, he probably would. You're right about it. That. Like, that's just crazy to think about. No doubt. No doubt. All right, we're going to wrap it up here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. want to thank the sponsors, Goodfellas Cigar Lounge and Spirits on St. John's Bluff Road, Brust Nutter Advisory, Wealth Advisory Team at Ponte Vedra, and the Southern Grill right there on Flagler Avenue on the South Bank in downtown Jacksonville. Let me tell you something, some of the best, if not the best, fresh homemade southern cooking you'll ever get is at the southern grill that'll do it for us this time around stay safe and be cool out there man check me out later in the week i'm going to be doing more of these definitely on friday check out on the relevant app uh the the horse's mouth got a big thursday man brian sexton's coming on cleo lemon former nfl qb's coming on cleo bunch of business guys and gals coming on gonna be a great time uh, Friday night, uh, Friday, I'll be back for Jaguars today, then the podcast, and then at 9 p.m. at Cole Haynes Irish Pub in Atlantic Beach, the dad bods take the stage, man. We'll be rocking from Let's 9 go. to 1 this Friday night. So after the Jag game, come on down to the beach, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll crush it for you. That's the plan. Anyway, so stay safe and be cool out there. We'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.